here's the actual solution and tests that form the NuGet package of our MS test helpers, essentially. And I wanted to point out some things about .NET Core, uh, MS test for .NET Core, they're different. The first is, while most of the attributes are the same, there are new additional attributes and there are some missing attributes. And then lastly, uh, test context has been stripped of many of its methods. So if you're trying to find out, for example, where your tests are running, uh, you're better off using system.io.directory.getCurrentDirectory than you are looking for it in test context. So what they've done is they've stripped out any duplication out of test context that you can get through one of the other core libraries. And I actually think that's a good thing so that um, it makes it very portable. Um, it also makes sure that file IO is being done by the file methods and so on and so forth. The next thing is uh, one of the things that people can't figure out is how to get the test context injected into their code. So we're all used to allocating a test context variable. I tend to make mine with an underbar and I use camel case. You can do what you like. But the real secret here is this class initialize method, which is a public static void that injects test context. So underneath the covers, the way the test engine does its injection is much closer to constructor injection, but in fact, it doesn't use the constructor at all. It, use, it finds class initialize with the correct signature and passes test context to you. And then here you can see that we are simply capturing it in the variable so that we can use it later. And that variable's at the class level, so I can use it throughout. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm setting up Microsoft.extensions.logging, and I, uh, as part of this library, created a logger that actually goes to MS test. So instead of the logger going to trace or console or wherever you want, uh, I've actually wired up a logger that will take the outputs and put them to the MS test output. And I do that by uh, newing up an instance of the MS test logger, which corresponds to the interface I logger, and passing in test context, which in fact the underlying logging method is going to use to do the logging. And if you want to dissect that, uh, feel free to dive into the source code. It's up on GitHub. But basically, what I wanted to do is two things. One is I wanted to get a hold of my test context. And the other thing I wanted to do is to have a logger object so that I could use my favorite logging. And a lot of the times, the things that you're going to want to test in .NET Core have a dependency on some de dependency injection scheme. And you're going to want to be able to capture that logger. Many components uh, have an optional parameter of logger you can pass or inject into it. And so when you're testing those components, it's super handy to have the ability to have that logger hooked to MS test. I'll also point out that the matching method for cleaning up after a set of tests, and again, these happen at the uh, class initialization, and when the last test is run, it triggers test cleanup. And you can do whatever you want, but notice that the signature is different. It is not a static method. And in fact, it is like most MS test methods void. So that can be very frustrating. If you don't supply the static on class initialize, it may not work correctly. And if you do supply static on cleanup tests, uh, all of your tests will fail. And that's kind of annoying. Notice also that our favorite things like test category and description are still around for MS test. There are a plethora of these attributes that help you dice, slice, and julienne your tests. And I encourage you to go and look at the MS test documentation. And now that MS test is open source, you can go look at the actual source code for MS test and see all the good things it can do. So let's dig into some tests. So basically, I have a bunch of little tests that are designed to demonstrate different aspects of the library. So here we have, we create up uh, an exception, uh, in this case, an invalid operation exception, and I want to log it using 
the Microsoft at extensions .login framework, but I want the sync for the logging to be MS test. So if we run this uh, test, what we get out of it is we can look at the additional output and you can see that it actually emitted in the form of the logger that we've all come to know and love. A couple more useful test methods. The first is a test timer that allows you to pass test context to it and do a test and time to see how long it takes. So if we were to run this test and look at the output, what we would get as our output is this nice elapsed time, in this case, 10 seconds. Another useful helper is the ability to dump test objects as JSON or to assert that a particular test object or model or DTO will in fact serialize as desired. And so here we have a test that shows both. One dumps the uh, requested model as JSON uh, with an optional title and the other does an assertion of a model that it serializes and deserializes correctly. And it does that by serializing the model to JSON, deserializing it, and then comparing all the object properties and asserting failure if some if they don't match. I'll point out that neither of these two are, are very satisfying unless you populate the model with the data that you want. Here's another test project that uh, demonstrates how to test something a little more complicated. I started first by starting my SQL Express running, and then this unit test, namespace, is designed to show you how to use the initialization and, and cleanup to not only inject test context, but in this case, we're gonna dynamically attach a SQL Server database for testing and then detach it when we're done. And this is a nice example that whether your tests pass or fail, you should clean up after yourself. And so if you've done something to some data source somewhere, and in this case, we're not desiring to you know, have a dummy data source, we actually want to round trip to a valid SQL instance uh, this is more of an integration test, really, then this is how you do it. And in this case, you can see that I have a little MDF file called zoo with some very simple tables in it. And I've written a bunch of code that finds the zoo file and then executes the appropriate SQL commands to attach it and detach it when I'm done. And they're all using my SQL helper methods, which is the actual NuGet package that I wrote that's actually under test. And there's lots of clever things in here. You can go and get off my GitHub 